Hey, my name is Richo Quine, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Say it like you enjoyed being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, don't ta- take my uh, less energy for a lack of liking what's going on. Hey, my name is Richo Quine, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Welcome to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host, and we are in the back room of the Media Club. I've got Rich Acoin with me. Hi, Rich. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Well, I'm doing great. We have just listened to Brian Wilson is A-L-I-V-E. That's alive. Rich, I would love it if you could talk a bit about this track. There's a great story behind it. Uh, is that the me recording the kids? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny how I was just all ready to talk about the synth being used in the song. That was really fun to record. Um, I, I got to record three separate kids' choirs. One that was an elementary school girls' honor choir, and then one that was like a high school um, honor choir. And uh, I did uh, this this huge um, rural um, city uh, choir that was like 80 kids. Um, that was uh, the Muscadavit Family Schools Choir. And that was really fun. And in each of those cases, uh, the kids didn't get to hear the song. So it was just these choir directors with uh, with the headphones on trying to 
uh, conduct the the kids to make it like tight and work. It was pretty fun uh, hearing a hundred kids yelling your your uh, your song and uh, uh, yeah. Take a breath. Just sing a lot of ums. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely I definitely say ums a lot. Um, Okay, the big story behind your record, We're All Dying to Live, is the fact that you had over 500 people help you out with the record. So, that's a lot of collaborations. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that. Um, I basically just wanted to pick something uh, on each record and do the opposite on the next one. So, uh, the thing that I picked with this record was the first EP I did was personal publication and I did it by myself. So with this one, um, uh, public publication EP, uh, I was like, I'm gonna do it with some people, and then some turned into many, and then many turned into, uh, th- it just turned into, at a certain point I realized I wasn't gonna do this again, so I was like, I should get everyone who I've ever collaborated with <laughs> to, uh, to work on this record with me, so that at least at one point in time we got to work on something together. Cool. All right. So working with 500 people, one record, it must be sometimes a little bit like herding cats or... Or spending hours at your email. <laughs> it's, uh, emailing was definitely the, uh, the most painstaking process, even more so than editing like the thousand uh, or so uh, takes that I had to look at from each person. Um, uh, not that each person gave me a thousand takes, but uh, when you tally up a few takes from each of the people, it, uh, the numbers get pretty exponential pretty fast. Um, but coordinating everyone was was a lot of work because um, I, I learned about halfway through the project that it was a lot easier to just send one email and get someone's phone number, hash it out on the phone and figure out when you're going to meet and how it's going to work. and. And then, uh, and then just go from there, because otherwise it can stretch out into weeks of organizing. Sounds good. I did a Google search today looking for a list of all the people you collaborated with, and I couldn't find one anywhere. Oh, um, I thought I put it up somewhere. I, uh, I definitely have them all listed in the album artwork. So uh, when you open the album, there's um, everyone listed in alphabetical order. And there's a, I took like a... Um, Kind of like a f- uh, passport photo of each person. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right, so you're gonna actually have to physically buy the album if you <laughs> yeah. want to know who did the collaborations. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure it exists, uh, but, but maybe, maybe no one's posted on their own, uh, may, and maybe because it's a, a photo file, it hasn't been digitized. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe I'll have to list it myself. I've been thinking about making a. Um, uh, kind of like a, a SoundCloud type stream of the record um, and putting in all the kind of um, almost like pop-up video moments of like when people come in and out of the record and uh, putting something up so you could see like when when uh, someone's playing the bass and when it switches to somebody else because that isn't properly listed on the album artwork. That'd be dope. I'd, I'd like to see that. Yeah, it's pretty... Uh, I should do it too before I uh, <laughs> before it starts to get foggy in my mind because right now it's still very clean hey my name is Rachel Coyne and you're listening to the interview show
right, well, welcome back to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You've just heard P U S H. That's Push by Richard Coyne. Rich, can you tell us a little bit about that track? Um, that track has uh, 40 drummers on it in the two and a half or three minutes that it is. Uh, uh, I got uh, the 40 drummers to each uh, play the song twice. And then I listened through all their takes and found the best eight bars that each drummer played and kind of essentially sampled those eight bars. And once I had the 40 samples, then I pieced together what the drum part would be for the record um, uh, for the that song. So I had to think uh, in small pieces, like when I first sat down to edit those 40 drum parts, I didn't think about the... Uh, 40 times 2 is 80, 80 times 3, uh, uh, <laughs> which is 160, mi- no, no, that's 24, <laughs> Two, 240 uh, uh, <laughs> uh, minutes, you can edit out my, my stupid math there. Take a breath, because you're saying a lot of ums. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely, I definitely say ums a lot. Um, Making this record, 500 people, one album, was certainly ambitious, and Ambitious people tend to be pretty hard on themselves when it comes to work, perfectionism, et cetera, et cetera. So when you look back on it now, what's one thing you would have done differently? Um, I think I would have uh, not spent so much time emailing, as I said earlier, and just like got right to um, right to calling people because uh, um, there was a lot of rescheduling, as you can imagine, throughout the record and. I think I would have also um, made uh, uh, made some more kind of strict guidelines of when I was going to finish the record because I, uh, I, uh, I definitely it definitely went on longer than I had intended it to originally. <laughs> Is there one person particularly that you'd like to call out that was hard to get on the record? Ooh, hard to get. Um, I know there was a. I know there. It, there was definitely like friends um, that I uh, I I knew I, I needed to have them on the record, and they were probably the hardest people because because any anyone else that I was just meeting and recording with, like if it worked out, that was awesome, and if it didn't, um, it's not the end of the world. But there was like friends that um that uh, the record would feel incomplete without them, and so... Okay, you know what I have to ask? I have to ask for one specific person who's a friend of yours who you had to have on the record, and why? Um, there was one friend from Vancouver here, uh, Lindsay, that um, I, I knew I wasn't coming back out to Vancouver to record, so I, I got her to call me up over Skype, and I recorded her via Skype. Uh, so, like, put the Skype conversation directly into Pro Tools, and uh, recorded it that way, so it was a really lo-fi recording, but it was, like, just so that it could be her. <laughs> hey, my name's Richard Coin, and you're listening to The Interview Show.
my name is Richard Coin, and you're listening to the interview show. All right, I'm Scott Wood, your host. You're listening to the interview show. We just heard "It" by Richard Coin. That song does end abruptly. Rich, I would love it if you could tell us a few things about that song. What to say about it? It has. It was. It was amazing recording the string section uh, on that uh, that song. We did it back at at Common Ground in Halifax. I was going to say, what else happens in that song? Oh, I recorded the church organ uh, back in Halifax for that um, at um, uh, the All Saints Cathedral uh, with Peter Tongi, who um, taught me a lot of um, jazz piano when I was in college. Um, and... Take a breath, because you're singing a lot of ums. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely... I definitely say um a lot. Um, uh, there's there are four different pianos that I play on that song, uh, from my piano back home to uh, the grand piano at at Common Ground to the piano at Hotel de Tango uh, that plays that melody line that doubles my voice. Um, and then I think also one at Dalhousie as well. So it's lots of pianos in that song as well. Cool. You have played with Girl Talk, and he's a guy that I think you might have a lot in common with. So can you talk about what he does and maybe a conversation you guys had? Did you share tips on editing? Um, we talked a little bit about the program he uses. He doesn't use Ableton or, um, or Pro Tools or any of the common ones. He's got this more uh, obscure program that he, um, he got used to. Um, that's this Australian um, sound editing program that uh, I forget the name of at the moment, but um, yeah, we we didn't talk too much shop, uh, but talked about um, sports a bit. And, uh, he's a nice guy. Like uh, he he's he's played so many awesome shows that it was it was great just just talking about um, you know different shows scenarios and and um, you know playing. Uh, playing clubs versus festivals and stuff like that. Uh, I, I can't. I can't think of some some sweet little nugget of a quote that he told me. But Rich, when you and Girl Talk were talking, were you guys inebriated? <laughs> I was definitely really inebriated. I uh, I had a super fun time at the show. Uh, he got Daryl and I to be uh, his hype men after uh, like during the show. Um, so we were running around with the um, the leaf blowers and confetti and toilet paper and and uh, stuff like that so it, that didn't really take much uh, sober effort so <laughs> we decided to have fun. For sure, for sure. I read once that at a show you put up your phone number so that people in the audience could text you. Oh, I do that every show. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's the best way to give out my music. <laughs> While we've done this interview, you've gotten two texts. Yeah, um, yeah. I've actually my phone, <laughs> my phone kind of slows is is kind of stalled a lot because uh, I have so many phone numbers stored in it that when I press on the text like the message button, it'll probably come up right away right now. But when I hit the message button, sometimes that screen. Oh, nice, cool. It's doing it. It'll take like it's taken like at least ten seconds might take another 10 seconds and decide to open or else it'll be like, no, yeah. So then I got to try again and I hit it again. And then sometimes it, I have to like close messaging and, and wait for it to reopen. So um, <laughs> do, do you want to give out your phone number on the show so that people can text you? Yeah. If someone wants to text me, it's 902-877-6534. Oh, there we go. Just open. There you go. So please, please text Richard Coyne. <laughs> he really wants to hear from you. Yeah, I usually just say it after the shows so that um, if people, uh, I just want to be able to give out my music so you, you, you yeah, it's like a gift rather than you, you don't have to download it uh, illegally if you want it for free. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Rich Coyne, thank you very much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. At the end of the show, I like the artist to pick one track off their current record and talk a little bit about it as I bring up the music. Um, maybe... Uh, living to die into we're all dying to live it's the ending of the record and <laughs> the thing I will talk about it uh, um, it's all cut up 
uh, percussion instruments and string instruments um, um, and very um, very uh, pattern based um, in its arrangement. Uh, it's also got some experimental instruments uh, made by Inner Soster um, from uh, Toronto that the Fembots uh, played on it. And it's got a lot of my uh, favorite um, vocalists joining me on it. Um, and ends with On We're All Dying to Live, everyone who took part in the record, uh, even people that uh, were on the like design end and not on the music side of the record, including people like that work at Sonic Record Label and stuff like that. I got them all to sing on this last, uh, the last choir part at the end. All right, so here we have Richard Coyne's choice. Thanks for being on the show, Rich. Thanks a lot, Scott. Hey, my name's Rich O'Coyne, and you're listening to The Interview Show. Say it like you enjoyed being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, don't ta- take my uh, less energy for a lack of liking what's going on. Hey, my name's Rich O'Coyne, and you're listening to The Interview Show. You woke up every day to a sign on the bed. Looking at his sign 